Right, greetings. It's um, Friday the 11th, uh, December the 12th, 2020, and this is a just a, a journal, video journal for uh, the experience of uh, recently my father being admitted into Frimley Park Hospital. So this is just an update of that particular journal. Um, I've got um, been to visit him today. Uh, praise the Lord and thank God for uh, being able to visit my dad and speak to uh, the sister on the ward. I got a phone call this morning from a, a lady from the NHS, Claire, and saying that. It's been decided that the hospital had done enough what they could do for the time being. And they, she was um, appointed to find my dad a care home. And that was the, that's the first news I heard of it. So that's what I was met with on the phone. I had a, an appointment this day to visit my dad. And I hadn't been told any of this previously. And uh, so I was informed about that and uh, I spoke to this lady in length about the problems I'd had and uh, she's very understanding, very kind. Left me her phone number if I needed to speak to her but, but I'm going to be speaking to her again anyway to liaise about... Um, what my dad's uh, preferences would be, choices, and then uh, I suppose logistically with funding and the requirements of care, whether he could come back home or not. So um, that was under, that was unagreed, and uh, uh, she was going to phone back on on Monday, but. I said to proceed to, because she was, she was uh, looking for somebody somewhere suitable in the meantime while the balls, you know, while, while things are moving. But the hospital are planning to release my, my father. And I said, and I explained to her that I've not been informed about this. And I've been informed by people on the ward ringing me and people I've been able to speak to and I've arrived at any other time I've been cut out of the from the beginning and it's like what I try to describe it's like a an unseen hand is interrupting and everyone else is not seeing it but I'm seeing the um, the interruptions and I got a good idea of where they were coming from and uh, I hung up the finished the conversation with this lady who works for the NHS who's looking into finding my dad somewhere and following the, as I put the phone down the phone rang again but I missed it so I was uh, doing some uh, washing and uh, then it rang again it didn't I checked the number to ring back but there was no number left and then the phone went again and it was a sister on the ward asking me when I was coming in and uh, she just ringing to say that she's in, keeping informing me of what, where my, what, how they're giving me an update. <laughs> now, I didn't say anything but because um, I was grateful for the phone call but I thought I wondered well I haven't been phoned all, all week. She didn't know that I was coming in today. And she, I, I wondered, well, has somebody asked her? I, I meant to ask her because I've spoken to her this evening. And uh, I meant to ask her that question. Well, did you ring out of, just out, out of your own initiative to let me know? Or did somebody point you onto it? Because it was strange that it, it it's always when I say something to somebody else on the phone. It's always followed up by somebody from the ward calling me, 
and any other time I don't hear anything. But when I when I speak to other people who ring me, and I say, look, I'm, I've not heard anything, and then I go through all the problems I've had, and then I'm it's always met up with a phone call. Anyway, I don't know, but I do. I have experienced all the interruption and been tried. Tried. To, uh, uh, there's been an attempt to keep me out of the picture, and, but not obviously. Not everybody's aware of that on the ground, and it's hard to just put your finger on. Well, who? Where? Where's it coming from? Why are people deliberately lying and not, and other people aren't? So to me, that's an organised. Um, di directive that somebody's been asked to lie on the phone or um, but anyway that's what I've been met with all along throughout this journal and uh, anyway I've made an appointment to go in to see my dad because from the beginning the truck which I knew which I tried to pass this all information on to meet the people at the ground who it would be uh, relevant to but nothing gets passed on so you have to repeat and repeat and repeat all these different people until you get to the people where your loved one ends up and then you've got to repeat it again because of the Covid it's been that extra difficult but the problems were that was, the problems aren't because of Covid the problems are there despite the Covid because I've experienced it many many times before and it's not necessarily individuals, because the individuals are, you know, very good, very, you know, caring. Can't speak for all of them, but... Um, so I'd just like to thank the Lord for, and people for praying for my dad and myself. And uh, so I give God the thanks and the glory. But um, I went to see my dad at uh, six o'clock, and that's his supper time. And he didn't want to eat anything, but and I wasn't sure. I wouldn't. I hadn't been informed, or it was missed in uh, the people I did speak to about uh, the seriousness of his strike. I was completely in the dark of what had taken place. I knew it was a strike, but I didn't know how much. I didn't know how much um, they were aware of. And I, w I didn't know for myself whether my dad was able to recognise me and that there wasn't permanent uh, brain damage, that he was, um, the lights are on but nobody's home, that he, he was shut down and unable to completely recognise me or communicate. He, the, the damage was so bad, so severe that there was nothing in there other than his soul and his, con you know, his conscience, but he couldn't. The brain is da so damaged you, you, you can't you can't reach you can't communicate. Um, but I had I, I had an opportunity to feed him his supper because I arrived there as was dishing up supper, and um, rather than wait for the the carers to come round and do because they they had to do a f on on that ward they had to do one one person before my dad. And there was only a single person to do it, so I thought, well, I, I, you know, I'm here, and I could speak to my dad, and he recognised me, and he, he he did speak, which I was like really relieved about because I, I was in the dark in that area, but he's still having trouble speaking, and uh, I, the um, Holly, the ward sister on the phone when she spoke, said. Could could I speak? Could if I was coming in today? When was I coming in? I said I'll be in this evening. We'll speak then. And she said, okay, we will we'll get together then. And uh, so I fed my dad, and he wasn't. He's not very. I, I know what the difficulties are with, with that they would be facing with my dad. And unfortunately, I couldn't be there at their meal times because they have them in in the morning. So. You know, because the, the logistics and the realistic 
reality of their timetable. They haven't got the time to spend multi and my dad all day to get him to eat properly. So he's been on the feeding food uh, tube. But they've wanted to get him back on solids. And they can't release him into a care, care home because uh, they won't be able to feed. If, if he stops eating, he'll have to come back into hospital to have a tube because they can't do the tube anywhere else. It's a medical procedure. They can only do that with the right people and the right equipment and the right professionals around. They are, they're, and they're not equipped in a care home to do that. They're not the ones that um, will, would be available. And so that's been the problem, he's, he's not been eating and they've had difficulty with him because um, and that could be loads of reasons. He's, dement he's got dementia and he, he might not be aware where he is. He's had some, he's had a stroke, so he's had some brain damage, so that, that could make him moody. There's a lot of things to consider, but um, at least I found out that he, he recognised me. He, could, he was trying to speak, but and he, he said a few f words fluently, which was a good sign. And I was able to. Um, he didn't eat his soup, and he didn't want his tapioca. I don't blame him. But he did eat a banana, and he did eat the whole lot. So thankfully, I was able to gaze for myself and then speak to the. Uh, when I'd finished my visiting with my dad and said goodbye, I spoke to. Uh, but I'd a pre-arranged passing the uh, sister in the ward to give her a shout on my way out, and then she'd uh, set some time aside for me to to explain where they were, which which I'm grateful for, and grateful for their care uh, on that ward. And um, so, expressed my wishes, got some information because he pulled out his medical file and he's, he has had a stroke and uh, yeah, I can't remember what she called it, an internal or an imploding or something. It's not a hemorrhage, it's like a brain hemorrhage, but it's a stroke where part of the brain or part of the vessels die and there's a blood clot and it dies and then that's where the damage is. And uh, because of the the lapse in the time of recognising the strike to the time my dad was admitted, that there's nothing anybody can do to um, prevent any further damage. So all that could be done has been done. But the question's been, where where is my dad going to be at at the end of this? I, which is what one of my concerns. Where is he currently at that time? That's my main concern, and then leading on to well, how what's a you know, is there any chance at all of him ever recovering? So thankfully, there is. Uh, he has done made some recovery, so which is a good sign, which I'm grateful for. Um, and I was able to find out uh, that he will. He's been released, you see, and share my my thoughts and. Logist and ask questions about logistics. Well, you know, if it's possible, my dad's wish would be he want, wants to come home, and uh, that would be the pro that would be the hospital's wishes because uh, it's the feeding. Because if they release, they can't keep him there. Uh, so. They, but they can't release him because they've got to take the tube out. So they can build him up with the tube food. But if they release him into a care home and I have not access to him and they can't feed him, then they'll be in a pickle. My dad will be left and he will fall through the cracks and he would have to go back into hospital and then the problem would be worse where they released him. So I've stated that well I'd rather him at home than him be neglected so at least I can feed him so that's what we're work what Lord willing that's what can be arranged on Monday and that's what we'll be working towards. But I'm grateful that I got my an opportunity to share my concerns and my wishes on my dad's behalf, my limitations and what I could manage with and what I couldn't and then 
be a, at least be agreeable and that that would be the direction that everybody's aiming for everybody who's is concerned is aiming for i don't know what's going to happen here in the meantime and you know lord william my dad won't you know pass away in the meantime but um that's out of my hands so i just wanted to give that update and uh that are those additional thoughts and uh, the events. So, um, again, I want to just thank uh, the ward, the Stroke Unit G3, because they were, you know, they have been working hard and they have been doing what they can. And a big thank you to the people who actually um, are doing all the nitty gritty stuff, like the feeding and the. Um, the physiotherapy, so I'm very grateful for those people. And uh, I'm going to close there because I don't want to um, drag this out. But that's the update for my uh, journal. So thank, thank you for everybody for praying that has been praying. And I hope that uh, you know things will turn out for the you know for the best uh, within reason. You know within. Uh, Realistic, you know, realistic uh, eventuality. So I'm going to close out and uh, sign off this journal and close in the name of our uh, Jesus Christ. And thanks, thanks to Him, thanks to God for um, answering these prayers and moving good people to uh, come to the rescue. So thank you for those people and thanks to them and thanks to God in the Jesus Christ name, Amen.